warped with a screen of light, a cloud of dust, and the haughty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Silver, let's go, before.
Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode toward Leeton, accompanied by the masked man's teenage nephew, Dan Reed. As they rode through the nearby hills, Dan finally broke the silence. Was the bank robbery at Leeton the last crime committed by the Mexican outlaw leader and his gang, sir? Yes, Dan. That's why we rode down this way. That Mexican outlaw has led his gang in many holdups in this territory. Ah, and report we get, say, same gang but a cattleman. Yes, they stampede herds, poison water holes. Sometimes even shoot cattle grazing on ranges. Ah, that's right, Kima Sabi. The Mexicans' gang is a menace to the entire community. All the ranchers west of the Pecos are worried. And some of the smaller ranch owners have been forced to give up entirely. That gang must be broken up as soon as possible. Come on, Silver. Get him off the call. Come on, Victor. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his two companions camped in the nearby hills. Dan Reed rode to Leeton for supplies and drew rain in front of the general store. Oh, who big you? seem to be sort of mean-natured. Never talk much to anybody in town. Just get what they come after and leave without as much as a howdy to anyone. Well, young man, what do you want? Later at camp, Dan told the Lone Ranger and Toto about Mr. Corey and his son. Then Toto went to the cafe to pick up what news he might hear and to make inquiries. When he returned, he told about the big cattle drive. If the Mexican outlaws gang hears about that drive... It may mean more trouble. Ah, that right, Kimasabi. That's the sort of thing they've been up to for some time. Toto, at dawn, you and I'll follow the herd until it's well on its way. Am I going with you, sir? No need for that, Dan. We'll come back here as soon as we're certain there's no further danger. The following morning, after the Lone Ranger and Toto left, Dan Reed mounted his horse, Victor, and rode leisurely along the trail away from town. As he rounded a bend, Dan saw the express stage coming toward him in the distance. A moment later, he was startled to see outlaws ride from a thick grove to intercept the oncoming stage. Oh, oh. Dan quickly turned Victor to one side behind some large boulders. Come on, Victor, come on. Oh, oh, Victor, oh. From his position behind the boulders, Dan cautiously watched the holdup. He noted that the outlaws were masked, and he decided to follow them when they left to find their hideout and report it to the Lone Ranger. There they go. Come on, Victor. The outlaws rode along the main trail for a short distance, then turned onto a side trail, leaving tracks which Dan could easily follow. Finally, as he topped a rise near the trail... Oh, oh, Victor, oh, oh. Several horsemen appeared with drawn guns. Dan looked intently at the masked leader as he spoke with a Mexican accent. Well, you are younger than my part amigo. Give him cover, senor. Right, boy. Right. We got him. Oh, I should take his gun, huh? I have it. I'll use my rope to tie him. As Hal tied him, Dan's eyes suddenly rested on an ugly reddish scar on the back of the outlaw's right hand. The boy looked searchingly at Hal, then at the outlaw leader. Why, you look at this leg there, amigo. Oh, no reason. I noticed he was looking to both of you sort of funny, boy. Now, wait. I know why he's looking at us. I've seen this fellow before. Where have you seen him? At the store, day before yesterday. I noticed then that he looked at the scar on my hand. She, she a remember. What I reckon this young maverick knows who we are, so there's no use putting on an act any longer. All right, speak up, you. You know who we are? Do you? I do now. You're the 
Corey. What are we going to do with him, Jay? Take him with us. We'll head for the valley where the Circle R cow hands are driving the big herd. Let's go. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Oh, that Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say, oh, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Dan Reed was captured by the outlaw gang and taken with them when they left to stampede the cattle. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto, keeping the herd in view, rode along a tree-covered ridge overlooking the valley, unseen by the herd riders. A short distance beyond here, Toto, is the end of the valley. Ah. On the left side, beyond the end of this ridge, is a deep gully, so the herd will have to be turned to the right to avoid it. If the herd should be stampeded there, the cattle would pile up in that gully and die like flies. Ah. We'll ride ahead and look over that particular place. Come on, Toto. Across from the 
gang on the left side of the valley. The Moon Ranger and Toto rode down the end of the ridge to the rim of the gully, just as the shooting started. Ah, uh, look, Kim Sabi. Gang at Edge Grove. Them stampede cattle. We've got to turn the herd from the gully. Kim uh, Sabi, look. Two men in cattle herd. One of them trying to hold on to horse. They need help. They'll be careful. Try to turn the herd from the gully. I'm going out to help those men. Come on, until he had loosened the rope on his ankles. <sighs> then he stood up and glanced at the onrushing crazed longhorn. Help! Oh, my ankle, I can't stand up. Maybe I can help! <laughs> hold, hold there, hold, hold! Try to get on this horse. Maybe uh, we can both make it. You, you aren't going to leave. No, come on, boy! <laughs> then pulled on the bridle and led the frightened horse alongside Hal, uh, who had gotten to his feet. I'll help you, Mom. Hurry! Oh, I'll... My ankle, I... I can't... We'll be trampled. Hi, hurry. Oh, no, it's no use. At that moment, Dan heard a familiar ringing cry. <laughs> Dan turned and saw the speeding masked man racing toward them. Hold that horse, Dan. Hold him. The masked man saw Dan grab the bridle of Hal's horse as Hal clung to the stirrup strap. A moment later, with a herd fast closing in, the Moon Ranger reached Dan's side. Hold it. Hold it. He's going to be caught. There. I'll lift this man to my saddle. There. You ride his horse, Dan, and hurry. Easy. 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 They're almost here, those cattle. Come on, Tiddler. Come on, boy. For a few brief moments, the Lone Ranger thought they'd all fall victims to the thundering herd. But finally, they were barely clear of the stampeding longhorns when the herd thundered past. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Later, Dan told what had happened while Hal sat with a strange, sullen expression on his face. When Dan finished, the Lone Ranger spoke sharply. Boy, you really don't deserve the consideration Dan gave you out there. Anyone else would have left you to die. Now take your gun. After we capture the rest of the gang, you'll be turned over to the sheriff along with them. Meantime, Paul and the cowboys managed to turn the herd from the gully to the open plain. Then the point riders and the Indians rode with blazing guns to face the Cory gang. Get up! Gay Cory and his men, surprised by this unexpected maneuver and realizing that their plan had failed, turned and disappeared hurriedly over the ridge without having seen the rescue of Dan and Hal. Later, as they rode toward the ranch, Alex was saying, Holy smoke, Jay. How can you just ride away with your own son lying trampled out on the plane? Shut up, Alex. I, well, Hal's gone, and there's no use hanging around to be caught by those cowpokes. After that hurt passed over him, there'd be nothing much left of either of them. My boy is gone now. You can take over the gang in the ranch. I'm going to take up and leave. We're all mighty sorry about Hal. You know that. Sure, Never mind all that. Just don't mention him again. What's done is done. Hit up. Hit up. Later, Toto brought the cattlemen to meet the Lone Ranger, Dan, and Hal. Oh, 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 you all right, Kimikabi? Yes, Toto. Yes, sir. The Indian told us how you came to help us in case the outlaw gang started trouble. We want to thank you, and the Indian, too, for what you did. We're glad to be of help. <laughs> Great day, isn't that Jay Corey's son, that hombre lying over there? Yes, that's Hal Corey. His ankle's badly injured. He and his father, the leaders of the gang, have terrorized this territory. Are you sure? Yes. If we pick up the gang's trail and it leads to the Bar C Ranch, that will be final proof. That gang is good at covering trails. It may take a little time, but I think Tonto will be able to follow their tracks. Then let's go. Put young Corey on his horse, men. Then we'll follow that gang and see where the trail takes us. Ah. that day, Jay Corey sat at a desk in the main room of the ranch house at the Bar C. The rest of the gang stood nearby watching as Jay silently counted cash taken from a canvas pouch. Looks like we made a big haul for getting that payroll. <laughs> now that Hell's gone, I'm giving up grabbing cash. But I'll always hate those dirty ranchers. I'll never give up trying to get back at them. Yes, you will. Hey, hey, the last hombre. He sneaked the door open. I'll get him. Pull it. No, I'm him. Use your guns, Rip. Don't be hasty, Corey. I'm coming. Hey, look. Men with guns at the window. Cut your guns, all of you. All right, we haven't got a chance. Government men. Fine. I'm not. Look. 
All right, you gotta stay at the ranch. But it doesn't matter now. Your ornery cattle traveled my son a how to death today. No, Corey. Your son is all right. What? He's waiting outside. How? Alive? Yes, and so is the young man you tried to send to his death. It would be at your trial to testify against you. And you ranchers and your men will be able to handle these crooks. Take them to the sheriff in town. Don't worry, mister. We'll make sure they get there. Good. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. Good to see you all later. All right, men. Round them up, tie them, and we'll start with them to town. All right. Come on, get going. I don't savvy that mask on me. Why is he here? I don't have to answer your questions, Corey. But you might like to know he saved your son's life, huh? along with the young fellow you tried to kill. I reckon you Corys will remember him a long time. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Draw of Death. to know that champions are made, not born, gives us all a chance. For instance, let's go back to 1943 and listen to the story of champion Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees. Mickey worked hard to learn the game. As he got on his way to fame, he practiced batting, learned to throw, and Mickey knew what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. No wonder Mickey's got all that steam. Mantle and Wheaties, they're still a team. Why, Mickey Mantle grew up on Wheaties, been eating them since he was 12. So good for a guy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Come on, Mickey, throw that ball. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. in a gun battle with outlaws. This is a hair-raising adventure of action and suspense you definitely want to hear. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.